Hi, I'm Kate Goodwin, Head of Architecture and Heinz Curator at the Royal Academy of Arts in London. The Royal Academy is located right in the beating heart of central London in the West End. We were founded in 1768 under a Royal Charter by a group of artists and architects. And we are quite unique in that we are led by um, a group of artists and architects who are elected into the Royal Academy for life by their peers. And it makes us a really interesting organisation in that we are independent of any government funding um, and can be led by that kind of creative inspiration that um, artists and architects have. Across our activities, we have most of what we do is public facing. We have host major loan exhibitions, anything from Renaissance art to the Impressionists to abstract expressionists to contemporary artists such as Marina Abramovich and uh, Ai Weiwei. And as well, of course, big architectural exhibitions. We had one called Sensing Spaces a number of years ago and quite recently an exhibition of the work of Renzo Piano. We also have um, a postgraduate art school where students come in for three years and have all studio-based work. Uh, there's only 14 per year. We have a collection which was based traditionally on the uh, teaching of those students back when we started and uh, now also includes the work of the Royal Academicians who are elected to the Academy. And all of this makes an incredible place to be uh, thinking about and uh, dealing, addressing architecture. In this way, I think architecture was sort of really thinking about architecture in a very public facing manner. Um, but it also exists within an academy sort of as an agitator. It's not the arts and it sits there alongside it, kind of inviting questions about the discipline, about kind of about culture, about civic life, about politics, economics, aesthetics. And that's kind of where we position what we do across a number of activities. So the activities of the architecture department tend to be focused on a number of main strands. One, putting together the big loan paid for loan exhibitions, but also then about kind of cultivating a debate about architecture, um, often to those who might not necessarily always seek it out, as well as the profession who do come along to see what we do. And that entails a, uh, a really active, agile studio space that we have, which has a changing series of displays and installations by young practitioners around contemporary issues. We have a public programming that encompasses things like lectures, events, debates, uh, activations, performances, symposium. We have um, an award program which was launched three years ago, which go both goes to an eminent practitioner about the culture of architecture, but also then seeks out younger emerging practices who might not yet have a profile for whom we can raise that. And However, all of this is currently on pause at the moment uh, with COVID as we uh, have to reevaluate and reconsider what the possibilities for the future are. But whatever happens moving forward, we will maintain the sense of, um, I guess, a, a few key principles. One, that we have an intergenerational conversation, one, that it's cross arts and disciplinary, um, and also that it is founded on inclusive, inclusivity generosity and diversity um, but it sits we all uh, we were we were closed for three months um, and have but have been able to open our doors on Piccadilly again to the public however in a much more limited capacity uh, we had welcoming some visitors in to see our Picasso exhibition which is now closed and soon we will be able to welcome people to what is an annual exhibition we which is called the summer exhibition the largest arts arts exhibition, open arts exhibition in the world, uh, which will be held this autumn instead of in the summer. And um, we have an exhibition of Gauguin's work that people can come and see at the moment. But all staff are currently working in our bedrooms from places across the globe. So you, like us, will be uh, viewing the Academy remotely. And I'm pleased to say Hannah Nile, who works uh, with, alongside me in architecture, is going to be able to uh, use uh, initiative of Google, a uh, Google's Arts and Culture Initiative, where they mapped the Royal Academy, fortunately, uh, last year. And we are going to be able to walk through the uh, Academy's spaces and share them with you. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, I'm Hannah, I work with Kate at the RA and I'm about to take you on a virtual tour of our site, starting from Burlington Gardens and working through some of the spaces that 
um, the public don't normally get to see. said was occupy it more than change it, inherit it. We've tried to make sure that the original building is revealed as much as it can be and celebrated as much as it can be. The big change is that we'll have two, two entrances, front door facing Piccadilly in the south and a new front door to Burlington Gardens and Cork Street and Bond Street. In many ways, architecturally, this is a sort of very modest physical in intervention. You know, we're, we're sort of knocking a hole in the wall, <laughs> making a little bridge, and you know, it's a small amount of architecture for a large amount of result. The fact that you will be able to go from an exhibition in Burlington House to a lecture in Burlington Gardens just by going through the link, I think that's going to be a great opportunity. something about making a room that's not a typical auditorium and it's our ambition to make a beautiful room. I like to think that the quality of this room might have some effect on the quality of conversation and it's probably the strongest piece of design we're making. I like the idea that when it's done no one's really going to know that it wasn't there before or you know wasn't this always there or I like the idea it's a bit more ambiguous, um, but there will be a series of interventions which will all add up to something very different. And the, the issue is then more about programming and, and activity than it is about hardware. Very aware of the dangers, of, in, especially in museum design, where the hardware becomes more present than the software. The Academy has its own collection. The collection doesn't really have a sort of home. It's like our silverware, it's the family heirlooms. And I think that stuff is not being given enough presence. It's not a project where you're going to necessarily have free reign. It's more to do with your, your ability to interpret and do the right thing than it is to do a big thing. For me, the Royal Academy is not sort of incredibly important project in, in the sense that we've been entrusted and it's something I value a lot. <laughs> 